Welcome to Happily Ever After is just the beginning. Keeping your relationship not just together, but happy, and we mean truly happy, is part art and part science. You've come to the right place. Here's your host, Leslie Dorries. Do you ever look at someone else's marriage and think, wow, they have it all together. Why aren't my relationships that easy? Maybe it leads you to think you married the wrong person, that you should just give up, end it, and find someone else who's a better fit. But if you've had similar struggles in other relationships, you may be following a pattern set in your childhood. And the chance that you will repeat this pattern with your next partner is really high. So if you'd like to know what is really happening and what you can do about it to make the marriage you're in now better, you are in the right place. Today, you're going to get some answers from my guest, relationship coach, Carolyn Sharp. Carolyn, thanks so much for being on the show and talking about what is an ever popular topic about how do I make my relationships better and why are they in the ditch in the first place? (laughs) Thank you, Leslie, for having me on. I love talking about relationships and I'm so thrilled that more and more people are getting interested in how we're wired and what to do about it. Yes, because as you and I both know, relationships are only natural up to a point (laughs) and then, oh, all other kinds of stuff kicks in and starts making them kind of messy. So um, yep. what we're going to be talking about today is, is something called attachment theory and how it impacts relationships. So can you give a brief overview of what attachment theory is? Sure. Um, an atta- attachment theory is really, simply put, um, an explanation of how humans develop psychologically and emotionally through our early relationships and really through all of our relationships. Okay. It, it explains how... Uh, our emotional systems develop in response to the way we were parented and the way we saw our caregivers, our parents, interact with one another. So we develop all of our emotions and our behaviors in relationship in response to those early interactions. And then they're reinforced over time through our later relationships. Okay. And <laughs> it was previously thought of simply as what's fascinating is it was previously thought of as just learned behavior that we were just doing what was modeled for us Uh but what has come to be known now is that it is actually physiologically wired into us our whole nervous systems are wired around these ways we learn to be in relationship well yeah i mean and that's and that's such an interesting you know thing because and again, this isn't about blaming mom and dad. So let's first off, let's get that nope. off the table right there. But you know, exactly. it's, it's really interesting because, you know, I, I'm surprised any of us turn out even remotely normal, whatever normal might mean, <laughs> both, both from just what right. has to happen physiologically to get us from those two little, you know, the egg and the sperm that meet and then create this human being and all the stuff that goes on. It's like, oh my gosh, there's, there's so many places that can go wrong. Um, but, you know, totally. and it's also that old argument about is it nature or nurture? And the answer is yes. <laughs> because, you know, it's this, it's this interplay of what we genetically bring to the table and then our experiences, you know. Um, and so can you talk a little bit more about how attached, you know, how this plays out. I mean, because I know that there's different types of attachment and, mm-hmm. and those are the kinds of things that kind of impact our relationships. Yeah, of course. Well, and I'm so glad that you spoke to, this isn't about blaming mom or dad because, you know, in how this works, a baby is born and is either in the family they were born into or is adopted or fostered into a family, and maybe the family has health issues, financial issues, maybe the baby has health issues that create a challenge to the natural connection that is supposed to happen between infant and caregiver. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that hiccuping of, you know, maybe the baby hasn't learned how to, the the call and response of a baby crying and a parent being able to pick them up, or Mm -hmm. 
any any of those sort of natural infancy behaviors, there's a hiccup in the in the natural dance that occurs, and either the baby learns to cry louder and louder and louder to get their attention, uh-huh. their needs met, laying down a emotional system that says, all right, in order to get my needs met, I need to be louder and louder and louder and louder. And I'm, I'm being very simplistic here. Mm-hmm. Um, or a parent or a caregiver was overwhelmed or they were too busy because financially they had to do seven jobs to get the bills paid so the parent mm-hmm. wasn't available, not because they didn't care, but so the baby learned to soothe themselves because mm-hmm. the, the caregiver just wasn't available, thereby laying down the groundwork for a, an adult or a child and then an adult who takes care of themselves and learns not to seek out connection and relationship. And those are the sort of opposite ends of the different attachment styles. At one end, we have the anxious um, or otherwise known as angry resistant um, attachment style, which seeks out connection and is very fearful of losing the connection and so is more insecure, um, seeking connection, seeking reassurance, seeking soothing from other people in relationship. Mm -hmm. That's one end. And then on the other end is the avoidant dismissive type of attachment style who has learned that attachments aren't available, relationships aren't available, and so I'm just going to take care of my own needs. Um, And so for that person, that individual, relationships are a bit overstimulating. They're a bit uh, destabilizing um, at the far end because they learned, uh, you know, this isn't safe. You're not going to get your needs met. Just take care of yourself. And Mm -hmm. so anybody that attempts to is a little little freaky, if you will. And so those are the two opposite ends. And then in between those – um, at the sort of ideal um, version is the secure person who had the right balance of independence and um, soothing or connection from a caregiver. And so they learn to balance, okay, I can get my needs met and I can take care of myself on my own. Um, and so they're able to sort of go with the flow, if you will, in relationship. Um, but the important thing to know is that these are sort of gross categorizations mm-hmm. and very few people fit neatly into one of these categories yeah. um, for yeah. all of their relationships and can float between them. They can be more secure in some relationships, more anxious in some relationships, more avoidant in other relationships, depending on what their system, the signals our nervous system sends us. And this is really laid down deeply in our the part of our brain that is sort of sending out the signals of our safety, our well-being, mm-hmm. um, not necessarily in a physical sense, although it feels really physical for people when they're right. getting those signals that this isn't safe. Um, and so that's some of the ways that it's, you know, to be really, again, to be really simplistic, that's some of the ways that those different attachment types are formed. Um, but most of us are sort of anxious ish or yeah. avoidant ish or yeah. secure ish. Uh, and so I really urge people not to attempt to, you know, uh, determine, all right, I'm, I'm anxious attachments. Right. Um, and I'm then I didn't that. name uh, this, right, because I think it, it's too um, easy to use that improperly and then not work toward growth. Um, and then the fourth style, which I didn't mention, which is outside of that, continuum is the disorganized attachment, which is someone who really unfortunately had such unpredictability, such chaos, sometimes unhappily, there's trauma there. And so they're sort of all over the place. There isn't mm-hmm. really an organized fashion to the signals being sent about safety um, and relationship. Well, and, it, and there's something that I want to say, and I think maybe we're getting a little bit better at it, but sometimes it's also so the way we're taught to parent, because, you know, there's the, there's the mm-hmm. old, you know, school of let them cry it out, you know, right. and, or the school totally. of, you know, or you're, you're, you're going to spoil, the, you know, you're gonna, if, if you pick up the child all the time, you're going to spoil them. And it's like, I mean, you know, so we have, you know, so it's not even just, I mean, and, and, and there's cultural stuff for, and, you know, and you're just like, I mean, I remember when my son was born and I was. 33. I was not, I was not young, <laughs> you know, and I'm being wheeled right. out of the hospital and I'm going, how does anybody know I can do this? You know, it's like, where is the manual? Right. 
And so you know, we repeat right. what we've learned and, you know, and, and again, mm-hmm. you know, one expert is going to say do this, some other expert's going to say do that. I mean, there's so much information that makes new parents a little bit crazy. So I want to make sure that people Absolutely. understand, you know, this isn't about blame. This is about, you know, we're all doing the best we know how. And, you know, there, and again, there's the, the personality characteristics of both both the parent and the child, which, you know, and, and just makes everything complicated. So I just want to put that out there. But I do also want to talk 100%. about, so you're talking about the anxious type of attachment. And this is where mm-hmm. um, people don't feel real safe and secure in, in the relationship and, you know, um, and, and the, and the, the term that comes to mind for me is if anybody has ever said to you, you're too needy, my guess is that that would fall into this anxious type of attachment style. Yes, in, in <laughs> sort of the common speak about that, um, right. and in the sort of pathologizing normal relationship. Right. Thing. Right. Um, that is how it gets categorized, and I my, my sort of hair stands up on the back mm-hmm. of my neck when I hear you're too needy, mm-hmm. um, because having needs does not make you needy. Right. Um, all of our needs, you know, the, the thing I say is that human beings are just difficult. We're just a yeah. difficult species. Uh, I don't think there's a better time in history to see what a disaster of a species we are. <laughs> and right so now. at yeah. one end... You know, at the anxious mm-hmm. side, and I mean, even anxious as a term is a little bit mm-hmm. of a misnomer because mm-hmm. it's anxiety at both ends of the spectrum. It's all fear-based. Right. Fear of loss of self, fear of loss of other um, at the two opposite ends. But in the sort of classically deemed anxious person who's considered needy, those needs are needs for connection and closeness, and they tend to be the squeaky wheel in the relationship. They're, they're sort of, their anxiety is having them run after their partner, run toward okay. their partner, cling and cling and grab and grab. On the other end, the avoidant type, their needs are for space, for distance, for independence, for autonomy, and they're running away. Their need is to get away and get time to regulate their nervous system by themselves. Both needs are equal in right. need and in legitimacy and frequency and in legitimacy. Um, they just are quieter about it. They're the, the, the strong and silent type, the stoic one in the mm-hmm. relationship who looks, they look like they're doing heavy quotation marks, look like they're doing better. But fascinatingly in the research about this, people who have, the far end avoidant attachment type actually have bigger health issues. They have hypertension. They have high blood pressure because they're internalizing all of their stress, whereas mm-hmm. the quote unquote needy one or anxious one is speaking out. They're they're yelling about it, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, symbolically yelling about it. They're they're racing <laughs> around to get their needs met. They're chasing, 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 grabbing, 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 and so they're externalizing their needs, and that's actually functionally better for us physically to be doing Mm -hmm. that. So while the avoidant one can look like they're doing fine, they're physiologically not doing so well. So anyway, the, you know, you were asking about the anxious and they're the ones that are sort of more clingy, more insecure on the surface. Um, They are um, negativistic. So they are the complainers, like I said, the squeaky wheel. So you Mm -hmm. never, you always, Mm. Um, that they're the ones sort of naming all of the problems in the relationship fed by their insecurity that their relationship's falling apart. They're going to lose their partner. Um, parting for an anxious um, person in, in relation, anxious type in relationship is very difficult. They get very stressed when they are separating from their partner for work, for a vacation, for a holiday, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and they need a lot of resistance in the relationship. And so that's what their needs look like. Um, and there are variations of these. These are, you know, generalizations. Um, but at the far end, those are some of what the what the needs look like, or the how they act out their needs. Well, that makes sense. So this is happily ever after is just the beginning on WebTalkRadio.net. I'm Leslie Dorries, and I'm talking about how you and your partner formed attachments as children and how it's impacting your relationship today with relationship coach Carolyn Sharp. And if you worry about your partner's ability to love you or you them, if you pull away from your partner to maintain your independence, you're not alone. You're more like you're more than like 
typically have less than ideal attachment styles. And this doesn't have to continue to cause challenges in your relationship. If you're ready to learn how to be more comfortable in your connection to your spouse,